Mendeleev proposed an arrangement of elements in what we now recognize as our modern periodic table. He was able to use patterns in physical and chemical properties to predict elements that had not even been discovered yet. Now, Mendeleev decided to arrange the elements in order of increasing atomic number. That is, the number of protons that you find inside the nucleus of each of the element's atoms. Previously, what had been chosen was an order in terms of increasing atomic mass. Now, that was actually slightly tricky because some of the elements needed to be swapped around. But he was then able to spot very clear gaps where missing elements were. Now, a fantastic example of Mendeleev predicting correctly the properties of missing elements and thus giving his periodic table credibility was gallium. Gallium's discovery was a few years after Mendeleev's proposal of the periodic table. The publication for the discovery of gallium showed an incorrect value of density. Mendeleev questioned it based on his predictions, and he was correct. Nowadays, our understanding of elements in the periodic table is very extensive, and we can see very clearly patterns in the periodic table in, for example, melting point. If we look at group 7, on the right-hand side, you can see as you go down the group, the melting points are increasing. Now, let's look at the photo of halogens that you see on the screen. You've got fluorine on the left, then chlorine, bromine, and then finally iodine on the right. And you can spot two different trends. Fluorine and chlorine are gases, bromine in the middle is a liquid, and iodine is a solid. So this shows that the melting and boiling points rise as you go down the group. The halogens are also getting darker, so we can use this information to correctly predict that the fifth element, astatine, is a very dark solid. Group 7 halogens also share similar chemical behaviours. They all have seven outer shell electrons. When non-metals like group 7 halogens react with metals, they have to gain an electron. We find that this is easiest for fluorine, which makes it the most reactive halogen, and therefore the most reactive non-metal on the periodic table. This is the reverse of the trend that we found with group 1 and 2 metals. Now, when halogen atoms react, they draw in a negatively charged electron towards its positively charged nucleus, but the electron can only fill the outermost unfilled shell, the shell that has the seven electrons. As you go lower in the group, that shell is further and further away because other shells are already filled on the inside. So fluorine is the most reactive and bromine is the least reactive halogen. So there you have it. How Mendeleev become an absolute superstar in the chemical world. How his periodic table helps us to predict physical behaviours and chemical behaviours of elements we haven't even seen and also how Group 7 decides to be less reactive down the group compared to Group 1 and 2 that have elements becoming more reactive as you go down those groups.